Together with Christoph Trautwein and Markus Gardelli, uh, we will give you a brief introduction and general overview to our recently published study. IDH1 and 2 mutations are frequent in several cancers, including glioma. Uh, in fact, they are disease-defining mutations for astrocytoma and oligodendroglioma, leading to a tumor-specific protein. And this protein leads to the generation of a new metabolite, an oncometabolite, hydroxyglutarate, which has several effects, including metabolic reprogramming. The question of our study was, what other metabolites beyond 2-hydroxyglutarate occur in the setting of IDH mutation when compared to the IDH wild-type situation? When it comes to the clinical diagnosis of glioma, magnetic resonance imaging is still the gold standard to visualize tumors in vivo. However, by this approach we don't learn much about tumor metabolism, so for that also in vivo we can use localized spectroscopy of certain brain voxels in order to visualize specific metabolites. However, this technique is limited because the resolution in vivo is pretty bad. So by using ex vivo tissue biopsies for NMR-based metabolomics, we can learn much more about tumor metabolism and hereby decipher tumor heterogeneity. By that, we can identify more than 50 metabolites with a quantitative value and put these metabolites into pathway analysis to understand what metabolites associated with the IDH1 mutation or what metabolites are associated with oxidative stress. And from that, we can learn novel therapeutic approaches and treatment targets. Using the approach that Christoph has just explained to you, uh, we investigated 101 tissue samples from 73 uh, glioma patients and created two different cohorts for comparing the metabolite profiles, the IDH1 mutation cohort and the longitudinal investigation cohort. In the IDH1 mutation cohort, we compared metabolites in IDH1 mutant versus IDH1 wild type tissue samples. And in the longitudinal investigation cohort, we investigated tissue samples from patients who underwent several resections and compared tissue metabolites at first resection with tissue metabolites at progressive disease. And the question was then, do these tissue metabolites correlate with clinical outcome? Or in other words, could tissue metabolites potentially serve as candidate biomarkers? To this end, we performed univariate and multivariate Cox regression and Kaplan-Meier analysis. As you can appreciate, in this Kaplan-Meier curve, we see the overall survival of um, patients in our cohort. And as expected, we have a better overall survival in IDH1 mutant patients compared with the IDH wild type glioma. However, as you can also see, there is not a large difference, at least in our cohort, between the IDH mutated astrocytoma and oligodendroglioma. Now, if we use univariate Cox regressions, we identified metabolites that could serve as potential differentiators in these different groups. And then we performed a two-step CART uh, analysis, taking into account specific metabolites and their cutoffs and the clinical outcome. And as you can see, first here are the distributions of all patients with black dots, and then there are highlighted in different color-coded dots, metabolite-based distributions of patients. And if we now look at the Kaplan-Meier curve, you can appreciate that the metabolite profile actually better differentiates clinical outcome in the IDH mutated group when you compare these two Kaplan-Meier curves. So taken together, our study introduces novel candidate metabolite biomarkers that, of course, need to be validated in future prospective clinical studies. We hope this video triggered your curiosity and your interest for your study and that you find our results helpful for your research. Thank you very much for watching.